Hey, welcome back to another lesson on Enterprise Java. In this video, I'm going to talk about a data grid, JSF data grid. It's a, basically a table where you can automatically link data from a database or from other source and put it on the screen in a grid format. So what is a, a JSF data grid? Well, it's a custom control that allows you to embed data into the page without actually having to do much programming. So here's what it would look like in something like we're going to program. So we're going to create a, an h colon data table tag and uh, probably leave out the CSS tags for right now, but we'll get into columns and rows and uh, you'll have the data implemented right into those. So CSS styles are optional, but they'll make the table more readable. The important part of the uh, components is that your data grid is automatically linked or bound to your model. So for instance, if we have a user object and you want the first and last name, or if you have a list of products and prices, this will easily link up with the columns in your table. Now before we get to the coding of the table, let's talk about some of the other components that you might come across using Enterprise Java. You can see in the bottom half of this that there are things like buttons and capture logins and calendars and picture carousels and charts. And so before you start inventing your own charts or maps or menus, there's probably a predefined control that somebody has built and you can just implement. And so what we're going to see in the data grid is one example of many things that you could use that would save you tons of time and create very accurate and easy to use controls in your page. All right, so let's get into the coding part of this grid form. Now I'm going to show you the final product here. So this is the uh, current process we have now. We have a login screen. And then the second page that we're going to show is unrelated to the login screen. But it does show that we're going to show some products. We're going to show a grid. And so we'll have products 1 through 9 or 0 through 9 and some data to go with it. So the data that's going to be filled into this grid normally would come from a database. We're not going to quite get to the database section of this tutorial yet, and so we're going to create a list of data as if it were coming from a database, but uh, we'll have to kind of spoof it just using some plain text. So you can see I'm starting on a new project here. This is a copy of the previous that we were working on. I've named mine assignment 2 hyphen grid. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a few more beans. The first one we're going to create is a class for the thing called an order. And uh, the order is going to be one of the rows that we would find in our database or in our grid. So this is a pretty standard kind of a class. Let's uh, create a few properties like order number and then uh, we'll have maybe a product name. Okay, so those are some of the properties that you saw in the table on the previous screen. Remember, a constructor is what is called when we instantiate a new object. And so this is just a function that will take a bunch of parameters and then it will assign them actual instances. So this constructor and class should look pretty standard from other previous experiences you've had with Java. Let's now create some setters and getters for each of our uh, properties. So this looks like we've created a class to define each line in our table. So each line is an order. Now I'm going to create another class called orders, which will basically manage a list of these order objects. So you can see that the class of orders is basically managing a single list of the type order. Now in the constructor here, we're just going to generate some data strictly from text files or text items, not from a database. We'll include the database part of our tutorial later on. 
So we're going to create a single item, order, give it a order number, a description, the price, and then the quantity. You don't have to have these exact same numbers here. This is just filler data that will make our table look good. So let's copy and paste this a few times and we'll have as many rows in our table as we create here in the constructor of the orders object. So I've created myself a bunch of fake data. Remember, this is a product number, this is the description, the price, and the quantity. Now, since this is a class, it probably should have getters and setters for our property up here called orders. So let's go and add the getters and setters. Okay, I'm going to save that. So we have an object called order, and then we have a list called orders. Now, the list of orders is supposed to be automatically linked as a managed bean into our grid, our data grid. So we're going to have to add the decorator managed bean in the uh, type up here just before the name of our class. Looks like we also have to import the... Uh, item that will make this work and there's our imports and it looks like we're ready to move on. So all this work on order and orders is really just getting us set up for us to create a data table. So our data table is going to be shown in the response page. So in the response page let's add some new items here after the um, login information is given and we'll start creating our orders and our list of uh, items in the table. So let's begin with typing an H colon and looking for something called a data table. So is it in there? There is a data table. And let's read the description. It says it renders an HTML table compliant with a whatever specification and uh, you can use some styles. So let's see how that works. So the data table is going to be having the uh, open and the closing tags. However, as with JSF and other instances, we have seen that we can automatically link our values, like for input forms, or in this case, the values for our table is coming from objects that are managed beans. So we have orders, and we are going to come up with a period and the property orders. So the name of the class and its property orders are both the same thing. Now the next item we need is something called a variable. And I'm just going to assign it the letter O. So the variable is going to be used like a for loop variable. You know, and you have 4x equals 1 to 10. The counter variable is the letter O in our case here. So now in our table, each item that we call next is going to be called a column. So in between the opening and closing tag of our column, we're going to put two things. We're going to use the letter F now. So we're using a link from this section here called the core of our facelets. So F is going to bring us something called a facet and we're going to use the name is going to be header. So the header will be the first row in our table. So let's give it a title basically. So order number is the title. So after the header of the table we want to be able to put in the each row which is a, a data point. So let's put in a pounds or curly bracket pound sign and select the object O. O is the, remember this is the variable which is the loop counter. So after O, let's try a period, and we should get some options here. So we have the four different properties of each order. So let's start with order number. 
So that's our example. We should be able to copy and paste this a few more times and just change a few pieces of data. So for each column in our grid, we're going to use a similar process. So instead of order number, the next one is called the, uh, I think we called it the product name. And let's delete this and change O dot, let's try product name. The next thing is going to be the price. And so let's choose O dot price, hopefully. There it is. And I think then we had quantity. So is that going to be our last? I think it is. So we're only going to have order number, name, price, and quantity. So I've created one extra column that we don't need. I'm going to clean up some indenting and then we should be able to run this and automatically get the data from our objects that are managed beans and put them into our table. So let's start from the beginning here, the login form, and we'll choose run. So it looks like I have the data on there. Uh, a couple of funny things in here. I've got these curly brackets. Uh, apparently, I made some mistakes in how I typed those. Let's go back and fix that. So obviously, I typed in the curly bracket incorrectly. I've got two open brackets and only one closed. So let's delete the uh, opening ones. And that should look better. Let's try it again. All right, now we've got a grid. We could uh, do some extra styling to make this grid a little bit more readable. All right, so I want to make this table look like it has some lines and some shading. So I'm going to have to define some classes up here when we define the table, the data table line. So we're going to use CSS styling here. So first of all, let's invent some styles. So we're going to say style class equals order dash table. Now order dash table can be any kind of a word that you want. So the header class is going to define the first row. So let's call this order-table-header. And then the row classes are also called their own name. So let's put in two of them. We're going to call this order-table-odd and comma order-table. And let's call that dash even. So now we save this, and there are several ways to do CSS. The proper way is to create a separate file with your CSS styles. But for right now, we're just concentrating on getting this to work, so I'm going to do embedded styling right in the header. So the style tag open and close. Now the next thing I want to do is start defining these things. So I have a class named order-table. So we could just put that in there as dot order-table and do some bra brackets. Oops, be careful you don't. So we have an open and close bracket. Now what are we going to do for our style? So let's call this thing a border and let's say one pixel black solid. Let's see if that works. Save it and let's rerun the page. So now when I show my form the border around the outside of the table is one pixel and it is solid and it's black. Let's uh, do some things like with uh, order table odd. And I suppose the background can be set to a color. So let's see if we can do odd numbers with a color. And sure enough, we can see odd numbers with a color. We could be more fancy than what we have right here. We could change a lot of things, but that right there gives us an example of what we can do to make tables a little bit more readable. Since we defined a header separately, let's do a font weight bold maybe. And that would give us a little bit of a distinction at the top of the page. And that's all I'm going to do for CSS work. Now, just before we move on from the grid, remember, that components in JSF are multitudes. There, we can have buttons, captures, calendars, graphs, pictures, uh, we can have menus. So let's uh, just say that the grid is your first stop on this library of infinite possibilities. And you can see that not a lot of programming is required 
and it, it makes your programming uh, quite simple.